Would you use any of the New England Journal past uh, two-year publications, phase three combinations with Elutuzumab, Brevdex, Ixasomib, Brevdex, Cofilzomib, Brevdex, Dara, Brevdex? Is that a good combination for a patient like this? I, I, it's, it's really hard to say that. And I, I, what we were talking about before about, you know, how these trials were done, they were all done in you know, rev sensitive patients, so the, many of them. And so, of course, this person is not rev sensitive. They've already had Carlin Dex, they've had Daripalm Dex, they've used up sort of our major drugs that we like to use. Um, again, if you can get them on something new, like an ADC, something like that, that'd be great. But the availability, the reality of availability is so minuscule compared to the denominator of need. Um, and I, I don't think I'd feel comfortable giving this person just ELO, Rev, Dex, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think I'd feel comfortable. I would agree with that. I think if this patient came to me to see me in clinic, I, I would have the exact same perspective. We, we see these patients, unfortunately, quite often in our clinics. Uh, I think the option you uh, mentioned, Ajay, with uh, DCEP or VD PACE or VTD PACE, in my experience, they are quite uh, efficacious to debulk the disease. But the problem is, what are you going to do next? Right. So you can do DCEP or VD, VTD PACE or VD PACE, and then you need to have a plan in place. So uh, could the patient then go to the CAR T cell? You could have the patient, if the ECOG score was better, the patient signed and wanted to go on, you could collect the cells, then do DCEP, for example, and then go on for the CAR T cell. That could be a bridge towards that. But if the patient is not eligible, if you gave DCEP and you had a response, and a month later the disease is back again, what are you going to do now? So those are the complicating uh, situations. So could an ALO be an example? Is that something you would consider, Ajay? I have not been as impressed with ALO. I think I, I would probably rather do a CAR-T first, um, and also because ALOs are now excluded from many CAR-T studies as well, so I think we have to think about sequencing more than we used to. Um, uh, Nina mentioned the antibody drug can conjugate. There are several targeted therapies, uh, BCMA uh, targeting agents with um, either bispecific or drug conjugates. And the problem is now you have to make a decision. Is the patient CAR-T eligible or not? Because if you start using these antibodies, that are targeting BCMA, they're currently being excluded from CAR-T. But um, I think I would probably prefer a clinical trial. I mean, we saw that the uh, previous data for, that was presented by Amrita Krishnan, um, the CTN study comparing auto-auto versus auto-allo, really no benefit uh, in all comers. Even the high-risk subgroup, at least as defined back then, was not beneficial. So I think if we're going to do allos, it really has to be something innovative, thoughtful, uh, and part of the problem is many of our patients are older, they have renal dysfunction, they're more prone to infections compared to other heme malignancies that do better with aloe. So I think we have a lot of issues to struggle with. Um, the one other point I think imp worth considering, and you kind of alluded to this in the data, but if you think about every drug that's been approved for myeloma, whether it's uh, bortezomib, carfilzomib, pomalidomide, len lenalidomide, DARA, they all in this initial studies work in about a third of patients for about three months. And here we have a median of seven lines of prior therapy, giving a 95% response rate uh, with a durability of almost a year. So I think, uh, admittedly, as you said, only 22 patients in this high cohort, but this is a really interesting signal. And given that it's a phase one where we still are learning and should we be using tocilizumab more um, empirically to, rather than waiting for people to get really sick, uh, a lot of things still need to be worked out, but I think this is why there's so much interest in it. And, um, Clearly, this may move earlier if we see that the uh, larger study, larger sample size substantiate that. But I think uh, that's really important to consider. And one other thing that we didn't talk about, that in some patients who are very cytopenic, who can't go into any clinical trial, um, and even DCEP could be challenging, sometimes we have uh, we studied these uh, salvage transplants of remaining stem cells, are a very effective way of resuscitating the hematopoiesis. Um, in our study of about 70 patients who had median of five lines of prior therapy, extensively treated. 75% uh, of patients who were neutropenic or thrombocytopenic recovered counts such that they could then meet standard eligibility criteria. Again, we're not going for durable responses. We're just looking for transient improvement. You tune the patient up term. and give uh, kind Correct. of a bridge into something exactly. else. Exactly. Yeah. So I was going to ask you, uh, Nina, so you brought up antibody drug conjugates, and Ajay talked about the fact that if you get one dose even of an antibody, that, could, uh, th that will cancel your opportunity to go on the trials for the BCMA uh, CAR T cells. But let's say that the BCMA CAR T cells become approved in the near future here. We hope for that. 
if the patient had received an antibody drug conjugate and relapsed from that and had some other therapy, would you consider a BCMA-targeted cortisol if it was an approved product? Would you say that you should not do that? Um, so there's no data on this, right, because by definition all these people have been excluded. But if you're up against a wall and you really don't know anything else that has the chance of having uh, a remission, I think that would be, if it's approved by standard of care and you can get coverage, I think that would be a reasonable alternative. Um, and I think to get them ready to collect enough lymphocytes and all of these things, you know, you may have to take them through a cycle of higher dose chemotherapy, some stem cell rescue, et cetera. I agree with that. Um, but I don't think it would be wrong to consider it. You know, I rec think? recognize that there is no data, so yeah. maybe it was uh, a little bit. I think bit part of the answer to that question is really scientifically driven, right? Yeah. Which is what is the mechanism of progression? Um, but and it's different for right. the ADC exactly. versus CAR T, we, right. maybe. Because I think from CAR T, from across the malignancies that have been studied so far, it's not always antigenic loss. It could be product, the, you know, the loss of the vector. So I think. It, we really need to understand why patients progress on these targeted therapies to really answer that question. Right. Um, and, and actually, from a reverse standpoint, I also think it's unfair if people have gotten BCMA-directed CAR-T therapy for them to be ineligible for ADC because, again, like you mentioned, it might not be just loss of BCMA, but maybe they're rejecting the T cells or whatever. So I really hope we can get more intelligent about trial design to offer to more people. And if we think about other classes, I brought it up because there is no data on right. bringing up for discussion. So if you think about like uh, blocking of uh, 20S proteasome, we have both exosomy, quafilsomy, velcate going after the same uh, subunits, and we use them after each other. Yeah. So why couldn't we use that right. to target like BCMA? But we need to, to know more and learn more about this uh, mechanism, why the drugs stop working, as, as you pointed out. So I think uh, my take on the BCMA, uh, you pointed out that patients treated here with on average seven lines of therapy, they may not be cured with this uh, therapy at this point. There is more product development to be done before we see even better outcomes, but it's still better than the three months we would expect to see at best probably with the available other options. And also they had some sub-analysis from this ASCO presentation showing that in those patients that actually achieved MOD negativity, that the duration there was one and a half years, so it's even longer there. So maybe focusing on those mechanisms that really explain why the drug doesn't work and also why it does work, and to hone in on those patients and to continu continue to develop the cortisols could be a segue. And then, as we pointed out, Ajay, going even earlier, uh, I'm sure we all agree that Absolutely. that's where the field is. Yeah, not right. waiting for the last one. I think one. from a patient perspective, it's important to emphasize this is a single intervention. Right. There's no ongoing therapy. Right. So from, it, from a treatment-free interval quality of life point of view, it, for the patients who are in remission, they're doing tremendously well, some of whom would have gone to hospice. Right. Absolutely. Thank you so much. This was a fun discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Langren, Dr. Lin, and Dr. Shah for your insight and thoughtful case presentations. To our viewing audience, thank you for joining us for this targeted oncology expert perspective virtual tumor board presentation. We hope that you have found this discussion to be informative and that you have acquired some practical knowledge that you can take back to your clinic. Thank you.